guys, what's going on? It is Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. And today I've got my man Royal back on the line all the way from Romania. Royal, what's up, man? How you doing? Hey, Ash, great pleasure to be here again. It's a great pleasure to have you, man. A lot of requests for you to come back on the channel, known as one of the best players in the game, let alone one of the best golem players in the game. So we're going to really teach my viewers today a lot about golem. But first, let's start about the state of golem inside Clash Royale Royal. No one would know better than you right now, man. A lot of people saying golem is hurting, golem is dead, golem's in a bad spot. And then uh, some other people saying that golem's never been stronger, golem needs a nerf. So in your opinion... What is the state of Golem beatdown right now? So, in my opinion, Golem is pretty good in competitive, especially because I used it a lot during the first season of CRL and it was working pretty good. Mm -hmm. But, uh, like last season, it was really bad in the top ladder. So, like mid ladder, let's say top 500, it was working pretty good, but nobody could finish high with like top 20 or so. Okay. So wait, wait, wait. Wait, you call mid ladder top five hundred? <laughs> I mean man. Yeah, if, uh, I, if I finish top five hundred, I'm not going to be proud. So yeah, it feels guess. bad, man. Feels bad, man. If I finish top five hundred, I'd be like, Hello Video would be immediately out. Top five hundred finish CWA. Could I go pro? <laughs> okay, I'm kidding, man. But okay, so when you say mid ladder top 500 it's viable competitively it's viable that means to 99 percent of my viewers watching right now in their ladder range which my my viewers are, are anywhere from like three thousand to six thousand it, it's it's viable yeah. it's fine yeah it is okay so you are going to be sharing and playing this deck live on ladder today this is your favorite golem deck right now and it has e-dragon there instead of the night witch Talk a little bit before we hop on into the, the matches here, Royal, about why you like this deck right now, and specifically, uh, why no Night Witch? Because I always thought that Night Witch, like, if there was one spot in this game where she could shine and be effective, it would be in a Golem deck like this. Yeah, so Night Witch is great, but a lot of people are using Mortar with Prince and stuff, and Night Witch is not that good against those decks, so I really like E-Dragon because it hits three units at a time, and it also, like, stuns them, which is basically what they need. Okay. I so tried Night Twitch, but I had more success with E Dragon. Okay. So I'm going to try to kind of decipher if it's because of your ladder range that you're having more success or if it's because of just the E Drag is better. So, would you recommend, is it safe to say that we can recommend for my viewers that if they go against more kind of bridge spam or Prince decks or Battle Ram decks, go with E Drag? And if they go against more like Inferno Towers, or more P.E.K.K.A. decks uh, exclusively than go with uh, Night. go with Night Witch or no? Yeah, and okay. also a lot of people start to use Freeze and Inferno Dragon, so you kind of need something to reset the, e -dragon, uh, the Inferno Dragon because That's... Night Witch is not doing a good job. That's true. Okay, so guys, there you have it. You can decide whichever works for you based on your own ladder range. I know some of you probably don't even have a leveled up E drag as much as your Night Witch, maybe. So certainly make that decision based. If you were to make, if you were to take the E drag out of this deck, Royal, <clears throat> would you put the Night Witch in, and would you also try to get like a Zap in for Bar Barrel? Or would you leave the Bar Barrel in? So Bar Barrel got nerfed twice, but it's still really strong, and I'll pick it over Zap or Log just because of the Barbarian that he spawns. Okay. All right, cool. So you'd still go with the Barbell version and the NATO and everything yeah. like this. Okay, sounds good, man. Well, hey, let's go ahead and hop into a match and uh, see how we do here. Okay, Can't... I'm going to search. Should yeah. be pretty because I'm not that high. No worries. Dank Gannon, look at him. 150 <laughs> wins with, three, <laughs> yeah. with two losses still to go, dude. That's incredible. Gosh. Do you, pl do you like you the global tourneys? Uh, I only played the first ones, but right now I'm on a little break because I played a lot during the CRL. Yeah. So right now I'm like I'm still playing, but not that I'm waiting for the season two announcement. Okay, okay I'm yeah. in the game. Yeah, we were talking a little bit off air, and you're like, dude, I'm just enjoying time outside. <laughs> you know, you're yeah. like, it's the first time you've seen the sun in a while. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, Refresh my memory. I think that we've since we've had you on, we've had monkeys on. We also we've also had Flobby on the channel, so we've gotten a little bit of different flavors of golem play. But if I remember correctly, Royal, you play a little bit more on the defensive side, golem. Uh, is that correct? Would you consider that accurate or no? Yeah. So unless I exactly know their deck, I really like to wait for them to do the first move. For example, if I know 
he's running Golem or Lava, I would probably start with Golem just because I might have a chance they have a bad rotation so I can abuse that, but mm -hmm. beside that I would just wait. You know what, you, you brought it up now, so let's. this could potentially be a mirror matchup right now, uh, or it could be yeah. a like, graveyard or something, who knows. If it's One thing I wanted to ask about the mirror matchup, because this is something that even when I play Golem, I'm never sure exactly what to do, but do you go, Do you want to be the second person to drop your Golem, or do you want to be the first person to drop your Golem? And then the second part of the question is, when do you play Golem at the bridge versus back in the back again? I, I get really confused when I'm going Golem versus Golem, I have no idea what I'm doing. So there is one trick which is basically what's going to win your games 90% of the time. If he drops Golem in the back, you have to drop it the same lane but on the corner. That way your Golem will be pushed by his Golem on the other side, uh, outside. So he will not be able to nade your Golem but will be able to nade his Golem pretty easy. Okay, so, so he drops... So you will, you will basically spend 3 Elixir for 8 and he will have to spend way more. Okay, so once it, once both the golems get to the bridge, kind of like, because I'm dumb, kind of walk me through the play-by-play. -play. So his golem gets to the bridge, my golem gets to the bridge. I won't be able to, he won't be able to nato my golem as easy with all my support troops. So what do I do now? Am I just stacking all the support troops behind? Yeah, so you are trying to kill his troops, but also... Okay. He's, oh, okay, he's oh! not golem. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna take one shot. I'm gonna take more shots. Yeah, I was about to nade that, but... Just give the tower at this point. Oh! And there's yeah, the power of the E-drag, because... right? Yeah. So do you think you've won the... Can he... How can he stop this, right? We'll see. Oh, he's not... I'm not sure if it's... Yeah, because I, I was expecting that. It's gonna be so low on Elixir here at this point. He has the Lumberjack, so do you. You're gonna have a raged up E-Drag and Baby Drag. You still have a Golemite. That was a nice NATO on his part. Let's see. Okay, yeah, so you still have to, yeah. Like, he can't take my tower, especially with the... Freeze. Freeze nerf, yeah. <laughs> it was... Uh... He's gonna try to freeze again. There's the freeze. Called it. It's gonna NATO. You get to the tower and come on. Oh. Okay, there it is. Wow, dude. I was yeah, so worried. I think, yeah, go ahead. I think I can explain what I yeah. did right Please. now because I was focusing, so it was harder for me. So, yeah, basically, he caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting the freeze, but then I mega minioned and. I was expecting him to try to make me spend too much elixir on the right side, so that's why I took so much damage. And then I was able to kill his left side troops pretty easy with my E Dragon, that's why I like it more than the knife. Yeah, well it worked out really well. I like I think the obviously the crucial moment of that match was that you went you switched to opposite lane with that golem and and you built a push in the opposite tower even though you had done so much damage to the left tower there. Uh, and that was just so he couldn't punish you opposite lane, right? Yeah, because I knew he he was not he is not going to be able to take my tower. All right, well let's go we into the next match here, man. Oh, sorry, that was pretty fast. Here we go. So is there? Let me go through the uh, the classic lineup here. I think a lot of my viewers appreciate this. So if they start out with a giant in the back, what do you do? Golem same lane? Uh, yeah, golem or depends because. If I don't have Golem, I would prefer to use E-Dragon because it's slow and then it can't really support it because it splashes. Would you, if you did an E-Drag and they say they put, dropped like, I don't know, a Prince behind their their giant, would you put a, a a Golem in front of their giant, like at the bridge or whatever, and let your E-Drag kind of just support? Uh, yeah, I think, I, yeah, probably. Okay. This is also a main example why I like E-Dragon more, because of the Prince, as I said in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I think she's kind of weak against it, but... Dragon First play of the stuff. game, Royal, they drop a Lava Hound. A same lane, Golem again? Mm, yeah, Golem, same lane. Or if you don't have Golem, try to like use Lumberjack on the opposite side just to make them spend a little bit of Elixir, and then you can easily defend with it. Okay, and last question. What if they go with something kind of weird? Like, what if they go with like a Magic Archer or E-Wiz or something? 
or a hunter in the back of their king tower as the opening play would you go same lane or opposite lane golem in that case or would you not do make that sort of a play um hmm. <laughs> let you deal with this first yeah aggressive play so de depends on the um, on the troops so for example magic archer i don't know i don't really deal with it because it's pretty weak right now but Against Hunter, I would probably drop either Gun or Mega Minion. Okay. So it sounds like you're not will willing to make that Golem mm -hmm. investment early on uh, unless they play like a really big troop in the back. Yeah, not really because it's kind of risky and yep. then you might be able to punish you and you won't come back. So here we go into double elixir time. You took some damage on that early kind of aggressive graveyard by the opponent here and you're going to go ahead and stop that Prince just in the nick of time here. Now, and is your intention on blood. this push, do you think you can take the tower on this very push? Um, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Oh, freeze. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't expecting the Hydra gun. That's a weird deck. So he's gonna prince here. He's probably oh, okay. That furnace. Yeah, this is a weird deck. Look at it, guys. He's got the E Wiz freeze being annoying. 470 HP left on the tower. He yeah, does I have, have to go on yeah. the bridge. Especially because I have so much, so many troops. And the Lumberjack is going to die. You're going to rage them up. Man, his deck is kind of... They probably yeah. use... Um, yeah. That, that troop right there, which I forgot his name. Inferno Dragon. <laughs> Inferno Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Royal, he takes seven days off and he's like, I don't even know what these troops are, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Prince yeah, is still game. hanging on to life, but you- Oh my god, again! <laughs> Royal can't be stopped. Alright, so <laughs> what was the pivotal m mistake on his part there? Like, when did you, in your mind, when did you- Because in my mind, it wasn't until that last push where I actually felt confident, right? So, when in your mind was the turning point of that match where you're like, okay, I can, I can win this? So when he, he used Prince and I was and then he also used Graveyard, I think that was too much because it was five elixir, which I kinda defended with only taking six hundred damage. And then he didn't even freeze it, so mm -hmm. So you think he was too aggressive like, on that second either, graveyard? Yeah. Okay. It's either going all in and freeze it or don't graveyard at all so you can defend and then try another. I got gotcha. you. All right. Well, here we go again. Let's uh, keep the win streak alive. All right. Here we go. Match number three. That was a while. Uh, oh, this guy. What is he playing this right guy, now? <laughs> I think it's like Loon with Tesla and Chance Skeleton. That's pretty annoying. But he plays in see. all of my uh, my turn my cash tournaments, and he's won quite a few. So we'll see what he's we'll see what he's running. Yeah. Uh, I want to kind of get your thoughts, Royal, as we wait in this match. Obviously, you guys know Royal, perfectly happy to wait until double extra time to make a play. <laughs> uh, but I wanted to get your thoughts on other Golem decks and, and kind of maybe some like weird, unorthodox Golem decks. Meaning, uh, what do you think about, I know these are not meta, don't get me wrong, but do you think that decks with like Golem uh, Graveyard or Golem Miner, like kind of a two-win condition Golem decks, do you think that those can be effective as kind of a surprise deck here and there, or are you just not a fan of those kind of weird off-meta versions? I mean, those kinds of decks would probably work in like tournaments like CRL. For example, if your coach is scouting someone and he knows exactly what they're going to run, you can try to make a perfect counter. Mm -hmm. But on leather, that's not really consistent, so I would not recommend. Yeah. Okay. And Lumberjack evades that giant skelly and gets two hits on the tower. Man, Lumberjack's so strong right now. So he's playing giant skeleton, which is really interesting. Good to see in a little bit more giant skelly. In fact, I shared a giant skeleton uh, deck yesterday, so we'll see. Yeah. So this is probably the deck I was talking about. Balloon. I yeah. I was about to go on, but. I don't know. I'm just gonna wait like it out. It's risky. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he tries. To, he's trying to bait my Nado, so I'm not going to King Thor this time. Okay. Cause... Very interesting. I like it because of his balloon. Yeah. Do you think he has balloon freeze as the last two cards? Uh, I think it's freeze. I don't know. I'm not sure. There's balloon. That's a lone loon. I'm going to go on it because. I have to wait until the loon reaches the tower, so... Mm -hmm. 
I have to defend that because that would be too much damage already. Mm -hmm. It's a smart goblin gang on his part. <sighs> but this is the problem because right. I, I break through, like, I'm gonna try to spam, but he'll probably, yeah. Oof. Mm. This is a nasty and then the deck. Tesla. <laughs> I also have to switch the lanes. This is another example of it's good to have that E drag in there, though. Yeah, E dragon over Night Twitch. But yeah. also, like with Night Twitch, you would be able to stop the gen schedule easier. So. That's true. That's true. So this is kind of it's a like weird. The bed. This is tricky. How do you get through the giant skeleton here with all your support troops, right? And Tesla. You keep spamming and praying. <laughs> okay, I'll have to nade this because it's already too much damage on my tower and he also has minor. Mm -hmm. That's going to kill everything. Oh, no. Oh, he missed everything. Oh, oh man. Never mind. <laughs> that was so close. That giant skelly bomb. Is sometimes you never know. You're like, wait, I think it's two tiles or what? Is <laughs> yeah. So yeah, how do you? Yeah, all right, I'll, I'll just watch. But man, the giant skeleton in Tesla, like, I don't even know how you break through this. This is crazy. Yeah, that into the giant skelly bomb. Your your baby dragon stays alive with the rage, but. He's going to tr try to chip my tower with his miner. Mm -hmm. So I'll have to... Oh, he changed it. Yeah, I was keeping my Lumberjack so I can predict it, but... Mm -hmm. This is just so difficult. Oh, you're gonna get the golem to the tower! Yeah, because of Tesla. No, I take it back. Okay, this time I'm gonna play a high golem. Okay, try to build Because I didn't want to stack too many troops in his, in the other um, giant skeleton bomb. Mm -hmm. This, this might work. I have to wait for him to. Wait for the bomb. Yeah. And I also have to nade everything because he's going to nade as well. There. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man, if you had just gotten those, all those stupid. Uh, dude. There we go. Oh, how did you win that? <laughs> this is why I love Robin Royal on the channel, guys. Dude, I feel like, man, I really feel like every single match you're going to lose <laughs> and then you always win. I don't know. I guess it just goes to show, feel free to hop into the next one too. I guess it it, it goes to show the power of uh, of you. <laughs> no, it, it shows the power of Golem in double elixir time that you're never really out of it. I love that high Golem, how you st it, like... You can see what you were doing as you were doing it, where you were just placing, starting to place, even though you had a push going, you were just placing your support troops in the back it, it, with intentions of getting another golem push down. And here we go again into the next match. Yeah, because I was two cards away from golem, so just dropping them, dropping them at the bridge wouldn't be a good idea because then it would be too much mm -hmm. bomb value. So I was like, okay, I'll have to cycle two cards and then place a high golem. Yeah, look at, look at this wizard up here. You don't see a lot of wizard in the top 200, but we'll see. This is actually good because yeah, it's like, that. Sorry. It's either Becca. Yeah, it's Becca. Kind of unfortunate that. Yeah, this way. Okay, he used a lot of elixir, but so did I. Mm -hmm. So you take a lot of damage there, but again. I can't really go alone because it's. I don't have Night Leash, so even though I Golem, he's back, I'm going to stop my push. Yeah, this is so tricky. So against this matchup, this is where Night Leash would be better. Mm -hmm. So if you see more decks like this, go with Night Witch. Uh, yeah. So what is going to be, if you're going to win this match, what type of a push are you going to have to build? In other words, and I think I might have asked you at this at this at one point in the past, but I honestly forgot your answer. But like, how do you decide which order to drop your support troops behind the golem against a Pekka matchup? Um, so I kind of need the E Dragon because of the stun. Yeah, it's like so that's I, the I really wanted on the board, and then that was way too aggressive. Yeah, and then 
I kind of need the Lumberjack or the Mega Minion. So I say E-Dragon and then Lumberjack or Mega Minion. Okay, so E-Drag to stop the, to, to hold everything up and stop the charging if he, in case he drops Battle Ram or whatever bandit. And then you have, uh, your second priority is basically your DPS troops to kill, to, to chop down the, the P.E.K.K.A. So your Lumberjack and your Mega Minion. Exactly. Okay. Okay, so this is the time where I can okay. go on because I, was, I will have the Mega Minion still. Mm -hmm. Alive, and then if, okay. in case it goes aggressively, I can just. Yeah, and I think some players early. might have made the mistake of dropping Golem at the bridge there so they can try to take advantage of their surviving uh, Mega Minion. But instead, you're trying to build a big push here. You knew you had that surviving Mega Minion to kind of clog up the lane. Now you're going to bar barrel against this. Oh, that's this. perfect. Come on, one more. Ooh. Ooh. One minion this, stays alive there, should... but. GG? Yeah, I, I'm calling it. <laughs> <laughs> he He's, poisons. Like, why, would you, why would you poison? It's not That's a desperation that. poison, I feel like. Well, there you go. Another another victory there for Royal Man. You make it look so easy, even when the even when things aren't looking great in single elixir time. And I guess, do you? As long as your tower is still alive, do you still feel like you have a chance in any matchup in double elixir time? So yeah, as long as they don't have like two pumps on the field and three M. Yeah. I feel like I can win every, everything. I also have to keep in mind what spells they have. So, for example, if they have like a poison and my tower is at 600, I have to drop the golem on the bridge. Otherwise, it will just cycle to poison. Yeah. And I guess my, my final question for you, uh, Royal, is going to be about poison, right? Because <clears throat> if they're playing a matchup like, let's just say, Graveyard Furnace or Three Musketeers with Pump, basically whenever they have poison bait in their deck, right, uh, do you use... Like, let's just say they start first play Furnace. Would you poison that Furnace in the tower, or would you rather save your poison and just kind of bar barrel or whatever to buy time? So I'm going to explain both of them. Against 3M, I, I always uh, poison the pump because I don't want them to get a huge advantage, and then nade with the 3M on the same side. And against Furnace Graveyard, well, of course, if they Furnace first play, I won't know they have Graveyard, so I'm going to poison it. But okay. I won't do it a second time because it's too risky. Okay. So if I know okay. their deck before, I wouldn't poison it. But as most people want to know the deck, yeah, I would just go with the poison. Okay, that makes perfect sense. So that's a perfect uh, kind of final question for you guys. I hope all these questions that I've been kind of peppering Royal with throughout the uh, video have helped you guys out. Royal, any uh, shout outs or anything? I know you're getting taking some time off, I guess, before uh, season two of CRL. Do you have any news? Are you going to be a member of Immortals again? Or is that up in the air? Can you not talk about it? Or I mean, I'm not 100% sure, but yeah, I want to stay with my guys. Cool. Like season two, season one was perfect with them and I don't really want to change the team but I'm not 100% sure. Okay, well we'll be looking forward to seeing you and hopefully the Immortal Squad in uh, 2019 CRL. Excited! Supercell, give us some news, man! Give us some <laughs> news about CRL 2019, jeez. But uh, Royal, thanks so much for coming again, coming on again on the channel, man. Always a pleasure to have you. Yeah, thank you for having me on. No problem. Uh, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Check out Royal Stats Player Profile and his social medias all in the show notes below. Guys, I am I have broken down and joined. Don't don't hate me forever, guys. But I have I have made a TikTok account. And I'm giving <laughs> daily, even Royal's like, what the heck? Uh, I, I, so I'm doing daily uh, kind of news updates for Clash Royale on TikTok. So check me out there, CWA YouTube. It's pretty cringy, so, you know, I don't blame you if you don't. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Huge shout out to Royal again and to Bren Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out his information in the description below. Thank you, and as always, take care, guys.